is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Ben Dickey, the Hello. star of Blaze, which is one of the closing films here at SIF. Um, the, I don't know which one, narrative story about the real life life of musician Blaze Foley. Sounds good. Um, I feel like that covers it pretty well. Um, the first thing that I have to immediately ask is, how challenging is it to be responsible for playing an actual living person, specifically when you're actually collaborating to a certain degree with people in this person's life on the movie? Because it feels like it could be a pretty weighty thing to have on your shoulders. It's, um, it's really weighty. It's hard. Um, a friend of mine that's done it was talking about it, and I, I agree with his sentiment, which he said there's a, a, a lot of shame associated with it. It doesn't matter how you look at it and the shame comes in that you know you how dare I think I can stand in the void where this person was um, I no matter what I do or what my intentions are um, there it's not going to be just to the person that they were and even the little pieces that I try to draw to mix in to make this you know sort of new amalgam it's not right <laughs> to do to the person you know so um, it's also um, easy, too, because you're provided with so many stories from people who knew that person to give you, you know, uh, the friends of Blaze throughout the process, very really getting close to when we started filming, and Sybil Rosen, who wrote the book that Ethan worked with uh, her on making the story, give you these pieces that are enormous parts of the character that you, you, you don't have to do that work to, like, fill in these places where that person was. So it's really hard, and then it's easy. So it's, 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 a, dual, it's a dual thing. Uh, meeting people that knew him after they've seen the movie is really heavy. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. And how, how much of a challenge is it sort of to remain authentic to who he is versus paint like a rosy picture of like, right. you know, he, he was a complex guy oh, that yeah. this movie presents. He was, he was a lot of people in one. Um, what, I, what I wanted to do first, the one thing that I wanted to do to to bullseye was the music mm -hmm. that's what I, and i and i'm very a serious musician in that like i take care with my music and i take care with the musics of my friends and in this case i'm presenting to a bigger audience that may have never seen him his music so i wanted to be in his music and authentic in his music i didn't want to do an impersonal impersonation of his person i didn't want to like totally uh, ape his voice and i didn't want to um you know, he had a limp. I wanted to provide the limp. I wanted to provide the southern draw. I'm from Arkansas, so that comes naturally. But I, did, I didn't want to try to talk like him. Uh, but I wanted to have the sing-songiness that he had. Um, he was a whimsical person when he was the sweetheart. And he had uh, a brilliant turn of phrase. And he was really um, optimistic and hopeful. And his music was sweet. And when he was the monster version of himself, he was pessimistic and and everything is doom and gloom and people are terrible things so i wanted to focus on all that stuff but i didn't want to do an impersonation you know it's you raise a very interesting thing and this is something i think about as a non-musician how how closely did you look at you know the presentation and the playing of music and stuff like that in the movie because it's one of those things that i have no idea if you know like yeah. playing a guitar if it looks real or yeah, not yeah. but as someone who is a musician right. is that something you're like i really want to make sure these notes look authentic to what i'm doing and oh, not yeah. just like well i mean I, all the music is live played when there's wow. no, no no overdubs there's no you know there's no uh cleaner versions that we added later wow, it's all cool. it's all live off the set uh, as a musician, when I'm a, as a performer, I move a lot. I move around, I dip, I swing, I, um, I move. Blaze didn't. He stood pretty solid in one place, and uh, his body was almost like a tree, and he was locked in. Those are the kind of things that I focused on uh, for the music part of it. And the way he stood and the way that his guitars almost kind of like morphed into part of his body and his, his fretting hand sort of like calloused over the neck and stayed there. Um, so as far as his, uh, his, his style of playing, Blaze plays very simple songs really dynamically. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, guitar players, you know, say, oh, it's easy, you know, little, little three chord songs. I was like, play it. Play it like he plays it. <laughs> it's tricky, you know, and there's, there's, a, there's a drop step lope to the way he plays. 
Um, it's like when you see somebody real cool walking down the street and then you try to tell somebody else about how cool they were walking, it's hard to <laughs> walk as cool yeah. as that cool person yeah. was walking, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, another thing that I was kind of curious about is I understand you have a lot of background in music oh, yeah. and obviously you're doing acting here. How difficult is it transitioning from one artistic medium to another? Is there things that are easy to carry over between the two of them? Are there things that are you know, harder? I don't know if it's fair for me to do it, but I really did apply so much of what I know about music to acting. And the language is very similar hmm. with timing and beats and rhythm of scenes and uh, the way that Ethan communicated to, you know, to me was musically because he knows that's mm. what I understand. But it all made sense to me in that framework. And um, shooting scenes and understanding what I'm playing, you know, not just saying, but what I'm playing is musical. And the rhythm of, you know, the rhythm of an argument is different than the rhythm of cooing with somebody. <laughs> and so all that stuff's really musical yeah. and um, harmonies and um, you know, you know, in a scene. You know, you're playing the lead, and I'm supporting you in this scene. Mm -hmm. All that stuff's musical, so yeah, it 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 makes a lot of sense to me. It, it, I don't know if it's fair to do that, and I I know a lot of people who are actors that are professional actors that hear me say that, and they go, mm, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. But for me, that's really the way yeah, I made sense. sense of it, you know what I mean? And I think, like, at least for me, I mean, and maybe it's somewhat applicable, I think about it in terms of, like, comedic actors going to drama. Totally. Because I think comedic actors really understand the notion of timing, so that's sort of interesting to think about. Yeah, it absolutely. You see that a lot. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of very talented actors, no, I mean, you did excellent as well, but you're you're working with a lot of people who've been absolutely. acting for, forever. Yeah. Was that something that... Was concerning, challenging, inspiring? Did they give you like idea? Like, um, what was that experience like? Because it seems like it could be a lot to take in. It was, you know, it was overwhelming to begin with. I mean, I, all the people that were there, I've known who they were, and I was into the, what they did and how they did it. So, they were also generous. And Alia was really generous. Josh was really generous. Um, Ethan was tremendously generous. Um, you know, uh, Sybil Rosen is an actor, and she was really generous too as an actor. That's I mean, true, yeah. Things that she would tell me and talk to me about, and stories that she would tell. Uh, but Josh and Allie were so wildly generous, and um, you know, they didn't, they weren't necessarily holding my hand, but they were treating me like I'd been there for a long time. They mm. treated me like I I should know what I was doing, but they also were opening opening up mm. uh, the horizon a little bit for me to let me That's understand cool. what's going on. So that was really helpful. And obviously, this film is written and directed by Ethan Hawke. Indeed. Um, what is it like when you're working with somebody who has, you know, a lifelong experience in working in this medium? I, I mean, I heard you talking before that you had friendship before this, right. and maybe that helps pave that way or something. But I, I always wonder about this in terms of like, you know, athletes becoming play or yeah, athletes becoming the coaches, coaches right. and how they sort of translate. Like it's like Michael Jordan being like, oh, just yeah. dribble through him and dunk the ball or something like that. Whereas like, yeah. you might not understand those references. Well, well. you know. Uh, one of the first times, you know, of course, I, I knew, knew who he was before we became friends, but <clears throat> he was doing a play called Hurley Burley in New York shortly after we became friends, and I went and saw him perform uh, in play, in this play. And he's he's so tremendous at what he does, and he's so um, available and, and focused and dynamic and real. And he's serious, you know, he's, ser he's a serious cat. And I've seen him work over the years, and I it's never lost on me how talented he is as an actor. He's really, really hyper-focused when it came to this story and the way it worked. Um, I was impressed with the ease at which he commanded the ship, the vibe that he brought from the very beginning, and the tones that he set every day, and the, even the words that he chose to use in regards to it's time to work and time to stop, stop talking. And um, he created an atmosphere that really um, supported creativity and like searching and finding things um and he also created an environment that made you not want to screw up you know what i mean but it wasn't designed in fear it was designed well, for I, I, I don't imagine this but that sort of presents an interesting question of like if there is a challenge that comes up between you and him how do you resolve it because it's like it's, it's the proverbial thing of like working with friends or whatever and you're like you don't want to ruin the right. Right friendship so how do you sort of work through those challenges that you might have had it was, it was very open you know there it was rare that i came to the table and was like i don't know about this <laughs> it was rare but it happened yeah I imagine. and it happened certainly with you know alia saying you know i see what you're seeing but what about this you know mm. You know, we didn't always get what we wanted, and, and sometimes 
he would be like, no, you know, no, we're not doing that. But most of the time it was like, hey guys, uh, this is how I see it. This is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And it would be, it would be, you know, 30 seconds before we started. We knew what scene we were doing, but he would huddle the team up right before we started and say, listen, I know that we're trying to focus on X, Y, and Z, but do you see anything else? Okay, mm. don't even tell me what it is. You know, do it. And so there was a lot of permission given to step out. And, and at times, he would suggest you step in. Interesting. But he created an environment that really, uh, to me, propelled the whole process. What was the sort of inspiration for you to get involved with this project? Was it just that Ethan was like, <laughs> you seem perfect for this role? Or like, what is it? Because it seems like, it, I mean, I, if I was very familiar with music, I might be a little bit scared to get into something like this. Was it just you liked the challenge? Was it that it was your friend? Was it um, like the music music that was at the base of this movie? I don't know. You know, he presented a vision he had, and I was flattered that he thought I could handle it. I didn't think it was a reality, right? Hmm. But when Sybil came into the picture and her book came into the picture, I saw it as an opportunity to represent a songwriter that didn't get his due. And I love Blaze a lot. So regardless of whatever happened with it, I got an opportunity to represent an individual that I care about a lot and represents to me a lot of artists that I know and love that are friends of mine today. Uh, really, really talented people who don't Either they don't have the energy or the want to take it to the next level, or they weren't given the opportunity, or they just didn't kept missing the boat. So that seemed like something I just really couldn't pass on. And what was married to that was I got to work with one of my best friends and watch him work inside of a process that I'm really interested in. There wasn't really a part of me that thought, like, finally, my chance to shine <laughs> and act. I was scared. I was really scared. Uh, but again, I had this life vest of music to take me. Mm. I felt safe in that. It gave me permission to be like, well, I'm not going to drown. I might look like a fool, but I'm not going to drown. I mean, did you guys structure the shooting of the movie in with that in mind? Like, would you film the, the musical scenes first and then sort of move <laughs> into the sort of more just dialogue driven scenes? Or was there, a, were you just throwing right in the deep end right out of the game? He threw me in the deepest part of the deep end. Uh, <laughs> he top loaded it. And it was when it, I didn't know anything from anything, so the, the assistant director started sweating sort of on the peripheral of my vision, like, what are we doing to this guy? And as we got closer to filming, he would like, come to me and say, like, I just want to like, make sure you're okay with the first week, because I didn't know any better. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't clock that they were top loading. And, and when I say top loading, I had like 26 monologues in the first three days that Oof, were two and a half wow, minutes yeah. long. Like the, the really long bits I had. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, this, this is what we're doing because of, I didn't know. But when we got done with the first week, people were like, that was cruel and unusual, you know, <laughs> because it was really intense. Yeah. But I was through it. And then the rest of it was, you know, little, short little rounds. There was nothing compared to the first week. So he threw me in the deep end. He had a lot of confidence in me. And I had a lot of time. I didn't have, I didn't have a lot of, you know, I didn't have anybody to read with, so to speak, so, but I had a lot of time. I, I sat with the songs, I sat with the script, and that's all that I did. As a musician, I'm, I'm good at memorizing, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, right. that seems like that actually would be one skill. Super, very super up. helpful, but it was, it was a complete, like, you know, every single day, upset, like, I can't not do this right, you know? <laughs> like, and so that first week was, it was hellious, but it was also, you know, I enjoyed the challenge, and I also, there was a bit of, like, you know, once you jump, and you start, you know, you're like, you're in it. You don't, you're not thinking about having yeah. to jump anymore. So it, I think he was pretty wise to do that. I mean, this is an indie production. I imagine the schedule was very It was, heavy, it was heavy, man. How, how difficult was the, the time change for you? Because there's a lot of time that occurs during the, yeah, the course of the film. It's sort of like, where were we exactly at this point in the school? Like, it didn't, it didn't, that, uh, I thought about that. And I thought that would be something that would, you know, I would have to deal with. But every single day there's a mission. And you have the mission in your hands and you look at it and it's like a play. It's like a it's a play for the stage and it's a play for the field, right? I have to do this today. And so once you go to hair and makeup and they do what they do so well, you just have your to-do to-do. And you take care of it. And there, there were days where it was like we're doing this in the morning, which is like the night you die, and then we're doing early you in the after lunch. Yeah. 
but that's just what we were doing. I, you know, I, I had the map. Like it wasn't, you know, I didn't have to be like, oh, right, I can't, you know. It all just came through the page, you know what I mean? The, the, I mean, you talk about the death, which is a very interesting sort of element to the movie, but the thing I liked about it was that was not sort of like... Gratuitous? A, yeah, like, well, not only that, but it wasn't like you're just spending the entire time waiting for him to die. Like, it occurs, you see it, yeah, yeah. but it's it's really more about this is his life, and it's sort of like that's just the butt end of it. Like, whereas a lot of films, right. it would all be built up to, like, this massive scene where it's like right. that, and then... I, yeah, we didn't want to do that, and that's, you know, when, when, when people that you love die, it... it it just happens like you know there's no there's no i mean in some cases i guess it's different but like in this sort of case i know a lot of his friends in his life were worried about him and the choices that he was making but for the audience in this it's like life like oh that person died today that oh you know like and it just happens how how has it been sort of seeing these people and working with these people who knew him see the final product because it's interesting within the film you see all these different perspectives of him right. by his friends right. I would imagine <laughs> them seeing it would be this weird sort of like meta thing of them sort of experience I've met so many people that loved and care about him and care about his legacy and he, albeit you know the sort of like slow building one that has been happening and I've been met with people who have have you know check me out you know what mm, I don't know you know and rightfully so I would probably do the same thing yeah, if sure. it was me yeah. but <clears throat> the question I always ask anybody that sort of comes at me in a deranged way where they're like listen I'm glad you guys are trying to you know do this and everything but he is not the way he was and he wouldn't have done that he wouldn't have I always say but what about the music did mm -hmm. we get that part right and they always say oh yeah you did yeah, yeah you did that right. that was really good I didn't want to do an impersonation of Blaze, and I wanted to be in the space that he occupied. But his art and the life that he lived, and this little, these little chapters of his life, you know, there are people who were great lovers, physically lovers, you know, shared bed with Blaze. That why am I not in this film? Mm. Where you didn't represent this period of time. We didn't intend to. Yeah. Uh, the 20 is, like, year cut is yeah, still. Yeah, you know, this is a story. I mean, we could have made a 10 episode <laughs> series of, you know, two hours a piece, and, but that's not what we were doing. And everyone has uh, a lot of chapters in their life if they get to live longer than not. And there are ones that stick out in, their, in your memory. I'm sure you have the same. Yeah. That's what this movie is. It's these. These points. Well, this this is great because I need to wrap up here in a minute. But I, I want to sort of end on that question, which is: you've gone through this experience, you've created this biographical film. Um, how does that sort of make you reflect upon your own life? Like, are you oh. now like, gosh, if they make a movie about me thirty years <laughs> from now, what like what are the things that they're going to highlight? And oh my gosh, if they are going to make it, should I start doing like more Cooler things? Stuff. Should I go like yeah, to be in the Tour de France or something? You know, like, whatever. Go on the deep end and make this interesting. Uh, you know, Sybil being on set every day, watching her life being filmed, I certainly did think about some things like that. And there are parallels with my sweetheart in this world and Blaze and Sybil. And we both lived in Philadelphia and we, hmm. we dropped out of uh, that world and we live in a cotton farm in northwest Louisiana now. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think about that sort of thing. I think, I think the process of making a movie and being inside of a scene, you know, time is always moving it's an illusion or however you want to say it but it's always it's moving right you know, yeah. the day will end and another day will come i think it's made me want to who cares about anybody making a movie about me i just want to be very present and available and learn and watch and see and feel and participate you know that's really the thing i want to do is participate very cool you seem to be doing a great start with the movie stuff so you might Thanks. want to continue rolling that out <laughs> during the future um, thank you so much ben i wish you the best of luck with this i can't wait to see what everyone else in the world thinks well, of it as it rolls out i know likewise. it's done well at sundance and south by southwest and now sif but yeah. like i can't wait for the world at large to Thanks, check it out so thank you so much yeah, thank luck. you the Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.